Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here today looking at Sonar, designed by Roberta Fraga and Johan Lemonnier. This is published by Matago. This game is for two to four players, ages eight and up. It plays in half an hour or so. And this will be available exclusively in the Target retail chain in the US starting in July 2017. Now, if you think this game sounds familiar, that's because you might have already seen or played Captain Sonar, also by Fraga, Limonier, and Matago. This game is for two to eight players though, and Sonar functions as kind of an alternate Earth Captain Sonar. How does this work? Here are the components in Sonar. You have four sets of maps in the two team colors, blue and yellow, with different images on each side. So archipelagos on one side, volcanoes on the other. You'll choose a map that each team will play on. And if you play in a two player game, well, one player is gonna take control of both maps for a team and three and four players, you'll split them up among the players. You have a clear plastic sheet that the radio operator will get to do their job, as I'll explain in a moment. Erasable markers and rules, which I'll cover here, as well as a big cardboard screen which you'll put up so that you do not see what the other team is doing and they don't see you. You got to keep that information secret and figure out what's going on as the game progresses. So you are trying to deal two points of damage to the other player's submarine and if you do that first you win the game. Right, let's get this up here. To start play each captain is going to choose a location on the map. You just put an X there. And now you're going to alternate taking turns, giving directions for where you're going. On a turn, you can either move north, south, east, west. You yell out that direction. So if I move north, I can go here. And the radio operator on the other team is going to hear me say north. They don't know where I start but maybe they'll just put an X somewhere and make an arrow north. Now they can move that on their map to figure out where I might be. Well, they know I'm not here and they know I wasn't in the top row because I would have gone off the map. I would have run aground there, but one direction does not give me much to go on. So each time I call out a direction, I go east, I go east again, and they will map that out and slowly figure out with some idea of where I might be. I can't be there, there, or there. And they'll, they'll figure out as things go on. Now, each time I move, I fill up one register here in my energy supply. And instead of moving on a turn, I can spend energy to take a different action. I could spend two energy to use my sonar. So I'd erase those two energy. If I fill up with four, I don't get any more energy. I'm just throwing away extra energy. So I might want to use these things, but it depends what I'm trying to do. I use sonar and the other team has to tell me either the row or column that they are in. Well, that's going to give me as a radio operator, big information. If the yellow team uses, uses sonar on me and I have to say I'm in F column, hmm, well, they've narrowed down the possibilities quite a bit for where I might be. That's not good for me. If you use three energy, you can go in silent mode when you move for the turn. So I'd say, I'd erase three, I'm moving in silence, and I don't tell them what direction I go and I move in one, one space away. So they now have to say, hmm, is he here, is he here? And they'll figure out as I make continuing moves in the next turns. If I can erase four energy, I can shoot a torpedo somewhere in the grid where I am currently located. I have to name an exact coordinate. I too, anyone who plays Battleship will be familiar with this. And if the opposing team is in I too, boom, they take a hit and they will mark their damage on their own board, not on my board. I didn't damage myself. But you have to shoot within the grid where you are located. Instead of taking any of those actions, you can choose to surface. Why would you surface? Why would you reveal your location to the other team? That's good information. They can see you now. You are above the water. Well, you do that because you cannot retrace your route as you are moving underwater. I don't know what sort of weird logistics take place in this Navy, but you cannot cross your own trail and you cannot even intercept it. So if you went previously north and you circled around, you cannot go back this way. You cannot enter a space where a line already connects to it. 
And at some point, as you start moving things around, you're gonna realize that you're trapping yourself or you think that the other team has figured out where you are. If you're not in the same quadrant with them, that's okay, they can't damage you, so surface. And when you surface, you say where you are, I'm in J10, waiting out in the corner there. You erase your path, and now next turn, you would start going again. They know where you were, so you better have some energy saved up so you can go silent, give it some deception there, and then you continue back and forth with this little cat and mouse game. As for the maps included in the game, Archipelago has tons of islands, which makes it easy to determine where someone else is, very easy to box yourself in. Volcano has fewer land masses, North Pole even fewer, and open waters, you're just running around, really trying to corner someone, taking pot shots with your torpedoes to see if you can hit them. And again, whoever does two damage first wins the game. And there's an overview of Sonar, which I played twice now on a press copy, both times with two players, just solo games, you're shooting back and forth and doing both parts. And it's interesting and a little odd to think about the two games here because they're essentially the same but not the same. They are alternate Earth versions of one another. And you say, huh, how did that come about? Now, by chance, I played the prototype of Captain Sonar long time of 2014, I think. And the game was not finished. The publisher at the time, which is not Matago, that publisher was considering the game, didn't really figure out how they wanted to present it and package it and sell it because it's an odd concept. It is an advanced battleship game that could work. The battleship is huge. Everyone knows it. Everyone likes it. This is sort of more involved battleship. So it has kind of a built-in market, but you have to, have to also figure out how to package it and sell it. So Matago did with Captain Sonar, and now Matago did again with Sonar. They're the same, but not. And what's interesting is Sonar is packaged for target. The rules are about half the rules of Captain Sonar. There's no role for a first mate, where in Captain Sonar you can play with up to eight people, with four people on a team, with all four people having a different role, and the first mate tracks the essentially the energy, and you're filling up little registers there until, doo -doo -doo. oh, I can use my sonar. Oh, I can drop mines, which are not in sonar. I can fire, now launch a torpedo, which has to go one to four spaces away from me instead of within my quadrant. So there's different restrictions here. You can go silent mode, there's special actions you can take in some scenarios. So it's a different role from someone doing that and you have the ability to fill up all these registers at once. Okay, that's one difference from sonar to captain sonar. Sonar, I have one energy tracker, and once I use silence, that's three energy. I only have zero or one left. If I want to shoot a torpedo, I have to do three more moves to fill up that register again. Oh, which is like a complication because they have, the other player has three turns to get away. If they think that I think I know where they are and all that sort of the LEO. Captain Sonar also has a role of engineer where you are managing the breakdown of the ship. I will confess, this is not a great role, especially for an, someone who's playing the game for the first time. Both of the people I played with had played the game once as engineer and did not like the game because your role as engineer is to have things break down and you are trying to break down things and as something breaks down, oh, we can't use torpedoes or mines anymore because the system's offline. And then you do certain registers and you tell the captain, we should go north to do this and, da, 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 and we clear this out. And if it's like, oh, now we can use mines again. So let's do this. Your role is this weird managing fix it guy where you don't get to do much in an active way. Okay, it's interesting for people who know the game, but if you were learning the game, it's, it's not super fun. So that's not in sonar. You just have the stripped down movement of the submarine using sonar to track people down, which again, works differently in Captain Sonar. Captain Sonar, you can, you've got the row, the column, and the grid that you're in, the, the coordinate, which is uh, a two by two or three by three, depending on the map you're using. And you have to give two of those three pieces of information with one being true and one false. So I could say the row I'm in, but make a different column. 
and they don't know which is true and which is false. It's this different, headier game of trying to figure out where people are and what they're doing and how to manage everything as you're moving all around, except if you're the first mate and the engineer where you're kind of marking things off and saying, oh, okay, can we go south now? No, we can't go south. Can we go south soon? That's what I want to do. That's a little Captain Sonar. Sonar is much more straightforward. We're gonna move all around, figure things out, and then hopefully just blow you up. But it's gotta be exact. There's no near misses like in Captain Sonar where you get two points of damage for a direct hit, one for an indirect hit. No, it's just you got a torpedo right into them. So they're the same and different, same and different. And it's an interesting thought experiment for designers to see how can I do this with other games that I have? And many designers already do this. Reiner Knizia is a champion of doing this where you take one idea and you figure out different iterations of it. And people sometimes mock him for mining his own ideas and yet, why not? This is a way to take something and figure out different solutions for how it works. So Sonar is packaged for this mainstream audience which doesn't want to learn as many rules and the rule book is far simpler and you will get into the game right away and you will do the interesting things whether that's in Captain Sonar, the, those, are, those are all left out. You're doing the more interesting, straightforward things of moving and trying to escape, trying to chase the other guy, trying to figure out where he is, and you work with a partner, and hopefully you can coordinate things together in order to hit that person. But you have the additional challenge of the timing of filling up your energy registers in order to chase them down and get to the right point. And we had a lot more cat and mouse play in these two-player games of Sonar than I recall in Captain Sonar, where you sort of build up everything as these big turns. In Sonar, you have to kind of chase them down, try to corner them. Sometimes you're just making guesses. You're just throwing out a torpedo and seeing what works. But if that does not work, you have at least four turns before you can shoot them again. And then you have to run and figure out what you're doing there. Pretty tricky. It's interesting to see on the shelf, and I'm curious to see what people make of this when it comes out. So, Sonar.